The fall sky is one of my favorite times to observe an image in amateur astronomy. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the best objects that you can view in the sky for October, November, and December of 2020. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your observing reports for the fall sky in the comments section below. Let's get started by taking a look at one of the most relaxing and enjoyable things you can do in amateur astronomy that doesn't involve any equipment at all. Let's take a look at some upcoming meteor showers this fall. To maximize your experience with meteor showers, it's important to do three things. Number one, get to as dark of a sky as possible for where you live. Number two, Take a lounge chair or a blanket and lay down and look up at the nighttime sky in a relaxing, comfortable position. Number three, don't rush the process. This should be enjoyable. This should be relaxing. Try to give yourself, if you can, at least an hour or two to observe the nighttime sky to maximize the number of meteors that you can see during that window of time. Just remember that meteor showers are a slow process but they can be very rewarding if you give them time. October hosts the Orionid Meteor Shower, which peaks on the night of October 20th into the early morning of October 21st. As the constellation Orion rises into the nighttime sky, go out after 2 a.m. in the morning to view the peak of this shower. November hosts the Leonid Meteor Shower, which peaks on the night of November 16th into the early morning of November 17th. Go outside and find the constellation Leo after 2 a.m. in the morning to view the peak of this shower. As December rolls around, you'll be able to see one of the greatest meteor showers of the year, the Geminid meteor shower. On the night of December 13th into the morning of December 14th, go outside anytime after 10 p.m. and face towards the constellation Gemini. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as it peaks around 2 a.m. in the morning, with possibly up to 100 meteors per hour, depending on how dark your skies are. From meteor showers to the lunar surface, let's talk about some great opportunities to observe the moon this fall. We'll start off the month of October with a full moon, followed by a new moon on the 16th and another full moon on the 31st. Most people call this second full moon a blue moon, although that's not exactly the original intent of the term. November sees a new moon on the 15th and a full moon on the 30th, and December hosts its new moon on the 14th and full moon on the 29th. The best time to go out and observe the moon is going to be right after sunset with a nice pair of binoculars or a telescope when the moon is in between its new phase and first quarter phase. This is when the surface of the moon will look the most dynamic, with craters showing depth, mountain ranges having shadows coming off of them. It's truly a remarkable time to observe and explore the surface of our moon. The best dates to view the moon under these conditions will be October 19th through the 23rd, November 18th through the 22nd, and December 17th through the 21st. Let's move a little farther out into our solar system by talking about some of the best views of the planets for October, November, and December of 2020. The main event for October is going to be the close approach of our friendly red neighbor Mars. About every two years, Earth falls into opposition with Mars, putting us right in between that planet and the Sun. This position has Mars become one of the brightest stars in the sky, and its large size displays surface features that can rival views of Jupiter. Opposition occurs this year on October 13th, but any time this fall will provide great views of Mars. Using my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, I'll normally observe Mars between 100 and 200 times magnification on most nights. If it's a perfectly crystal clear evening, I'll sometimes put on a 2 times Barlow lens and pump it up to 400 times magnification, but those nights are few and far between. 
Although Jupiter and Saturn will be setting earlier and earlier as we go through the fall, you can still get some great views of them, particularly early in the evening in October and November. When it comes to Jupiter and Saturn, look out for a great conjunction of these two massive planets on December 21st, when they are just going to be 0.1 degrees away from each other in the nighttime sky. This conjunction will be low to the horizon for most of us, but will still be something that you want to try to catch right after sunset on the 21st using a pair of binoculars or a telescope. As we leave the confines of our solar system, let's talk about some of the best deep sky objects to view this fall. The main event for me this fall is going to be observing and imaging the Andromeda Galaxy. Nothing quite compares to looking through a telescope at another galaxy that takes up so much of the nighttime sky, with Andromeda taking up roughly six times more of the sky than a full moon. Through my 8-inch telescope, I'll be able to make out the bright interior core of this galaxy and even some faint hints of its outer structure under dark skies. Next on my list, two of the finest open clusters in the nighttime sky. If you own a 2-inch eyepiece, throw it in your telescope and enjoy some wide-field, low-magnification views of this part of the sky. I typically like to observe the double cluster between 32 and 48 times magnification. Next, head on down to the end of the constellation Cassiopeia for the beautiful Caroline's Rose. Charles Messier may have missed this target, but we sure won't. This dense open cluster has hundreds of stars visible in its dense field. Although it appears in most winter charts, I still consider our next target, the Pleiades, to be a solid fall target. This open cluster is one of the best targets of the year and can be viewed with a telescope, binoculars, or just the naked eye. As you begin to go from a low to high magnification view, you will notice more and more stars showing up and perhaps even some hints of nebulosity under dark skies with larger telescopes. As the fall sky transitions from November to December, I can't help but encourage you to stay up a little bit later in the night to take a peek at one of the best winter objects to come. I'm of course talking about the Orion Nebula. Although we'll spend much more time on this object next month, I have to mention it on this list for those willing to stay up late as it rises out of the southeast. Nothing quite compares to this nebula, but we'll have more to say on that for the winter sky to come. I hope you enjoyed this night sky guide to the fall of 2020. If you've been out to observe any objects for October, November, or December, please be sure to leave an observing report in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.